Hello and welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. Thank you so much for joining us today. On this episode of Red Carpet, an exclusive interview with Malawian actress Mwai Simbota. Marvel Comics' first Muslim superhero makes her big screen debut and a look at Nigerian designer Bubu Ogisi's culturally inspired fashion creations. Let's get started with the show. Ethiopian artist Julie Meretu is making history again in the African art world by breaking the record for the highest selling artwork by an African artist. Her abstract painting titled Walkers with the Dawn and Morning recently broke a record as the highest selling artwork by an African artist, fetching $10.7 million at Sotheby's in New York. The first ever Africa Cinema Summit was held in the Ghanaian capital Accra bringing together directors and distributors, international industry representatives and cinema leaders such as Nigeria's Film One Group and Ghana's Silverbird Cinema attended the summit. Africa's film and audiovisual businesses generate about $5 billion annually but could potentially reach about $20 billion and create 20 million jobs. That's according to the United Nations Cultural Agency, UNESCO, citing a Pan-Africa Filmmakers Federation. It's an exciting time for African music as the new Afrobeats category was inaugurated at this year's Billboard Music Awards held on November the 19th further highlighting the global impact of African artists. Banner Boy walked away as winner of Best Afrobeats Act, while fellow Nigerian artist Rema won Best Afrobeats Song for his hit Calm Down with Selena Gomez. Top winners of the night included country star Morgan Wallen with 11 wins, Taylor Swift with 10 awards, and Drake taking home five Billboard Awards. Malawian actress Mai Simbota won a Best Actress Award in a feature film, Southern Africa, at the Sotambe International Film Competition, which was recently held in Lusaka, Zambia. Sotambe, which means come and watch, is an annual international film festival that attracts artists from across Southern Africa. The accolade has spurred Simbota's ambitions to climb even higher. Red Carpet spoke with Simbota in Blantyre. Let's check it out. This is Simbota's first award at the international level. Last year, she won her very first award as Best Actress from the Film Association of Malawi. Simbota, a radio presenter at Radio 2 FM of the Malawi Broadcasting Corporation, says that the award affirms the effort she put into her role in the movie. It was not too much of a surprise, but I was still surprised at being that the other countries uh, the other actresses were from like South Africa, Botswana, Tanzania, Zambia. So I was like, those are huge. <laughs> they have their own platforms that are huge. So I was intimidated and I was like, but yeah, it's, it was a, an amazing feeling. Surprising, but I felt like, yeah, I deserve it. <laughs> In the movie titled Miss Norma, Simbota plays Cecilia an Interpol officer who investigates the spate of killings of people with albinism following the abduction of her albino brother. The film comes at a time when Malawi continues to face attacks on people with albinism for their body parts. Actor Ian Simbota, no relations to Mwai, says that winning the award means that the film has helped send a strong message on the plight of persons with albinism. When I looked at the story, yes, in the story you'd find that it got to the leads of uh, who may be involved. But uh, here in Malawi, when we go to the practical aspect, we don't, until now, we don't even know the market. Uh, and some people have come out to say, no, there are no markets for uh, bonds of persons with habilism. Then we say, if there are no markets, why are we still being killed? Where do our bonds go? Mwai believes that her character's effort to crack down on the market was probably the aspect that won the hearts and minds of those who voted for her. It was a difficult character to step into because in any case I had to put myself in that position that if I would actually have a brother or a sister with albinism and this is what they go through, how can I deal with that? So in any case that translated in my delivery. Mwai started professional acting in 2010, 
but came to the limelight in 2013 when she started featuring on a local TV series known as Our Choices. She says that this award has propelled her ambitions to dream big. Definitely the dream would be Hollywood. Yeah, but besides that, just in context, uh, the dream would definitely be to have more accolades to my name and also to be able to create my own projects, to be able to write great scripts, whether someone else directs it, but I just want to write. Operalia, one of the most prestigious opera competitions in the world, stopped in Cape Town, South Africa. The annual contest, which began October 30th and ran through November 5th, was created by Spanish tenor Placido Domingo 30 years ago. It features 34 contestants selected from an initial pool of about 800 singers. Five of them are from South Africa. In a studio at the Cape Town Opera House, soprano Mbuelo Yende is rehearsing Mozart and Wagner. Wearing a floral dress, her hand waves in front of her body to the rhythm of the melody as her powerful vibrato rings out. At 32, Yende already has an established career, but the contest offers important exposure. It offers an opportunity to be spotted without having to fly around the world. This competition would mean that I am trying to broaden my horizons even more. So I am trying to um, audition, or I'm trying to appeal to much, a much bigger audience than the one that I'm used to in Frankfurt. Another contestant followed her into the studio. Sifokazi Moteno, a 31-year-old mezzo from the southeastern city of Kaberha, now based in New York. Um, my favorite thing about opera singing, it's storytelling, um, creating art, you know, because it's not just about standing on stage and just singing. We tell a story, we communicate with the audience, we, you get to connect with the audience. It's not just about delivering there's, there should be a connection between like a performer and the audience. By the time Maranti gave up a job in human resources to chase his opera dream. He had to tell his parents he would not be able to support them for a while, and sometimes went days without a meal while trying to secure grants to fund his studies. But he doesn't regret taking the plunge for a second. So it was a lot of stress going into it, but, but on the other flip side of it, at the same time, even though I was very I was struggling very much. I was happy. Operalia was founded in 1993 and has previously been held in cities like Paris, London, Tokyo, Los Angeles, and Moscow. Past winners have included Pretty Yende from South Africa, who sang at the coronation of Britain's King Charles III in 2023. Marvel Comics' first Muslim superhero is making her big screen debut in the Marvel's movie. From Los Angeles, Jania Dulo brings us the story of the teenage Miss Marvel. So I wear this one Cosplayer Liana Ahmed has many Miss Marvel costumes, with the Muslim superhero making her big screen debut in the Marvel's movie. Ahmed says the character is the first action hero who reflects her identity. So what I see in her is that um, desire to do good, that constant battle and constant um, uh, struggle as a, as a young person um, living under my parents' rule. Like, um, how do I go be an American and also how do I go be, you know, a, a South Asian person? We're looking for Kamala Khan. The character Kamala Khan, played by actress Iman Velani, is a Pakistani-American teenager from New Jersey. Growing up in the United States, Ahmed says she didn't see Muslim or South Asian comics and is most touched by the authenticity of Miss Marvel's immigrant family. His representation is so much like my father. Um, yeah, it brings me to tears. Because my dad was always talking about history, always talking about... Um, the cultural differences, and he would tease anybody that got too religious. 
Director Nia Da Costa says the cons are central to her storytelling. You know, one of the biggest themes of this movie for me is like family. And like the Khan family is a really big part of the film. They're like the beating heart of the film. And these three women become a family. Miss Marvel is an impactful character for Muslims around the world, says Muslim rights activist Marguerite Hill. Ms. Marvel is definitely something that has made a major shift. Um, we love her, so we're really excited about the Marvels coming out. Director Da Costa says she stayed away from cliches of strong women on screen. It was really fun also that they're all so different and we didn't have to do any like fake, you know, girl boss thing. It was just like, yeah, let's just them be people and who have superpowers uh, and we beat each other up. Um, and I think that, that was what we set out to do and it was a lot of fun. The Marvels has opened to mixed reviews, but that has done nothing to dampen the enthusiasm Miss Marvel fans have for their Pakistani-American hero. At the 12th edition of Lagos Fashion Week in October 2023, Nigerian designer Bubu Ogisi made a bold statement with her spring-summer 2024 collection entitled Shadows. Ogisi showcased her creations in a striking color palette of black, white and tan, creating a visually captivating collection. The models walked the runway adorned with handcrafted bracelets and colors, adding a touch of artisanal craftsmanship to the designs. Their hands and faces were marked with henna, adding an element of cultural significance and traditional beauty practices. Describing herself more as a researcher than designer, Ogisi travels Africa looking for inspiration to incorporate traditional materials and techniques into her designs for her. I am Isigo Brand. The materials we used in this collection are all protective materials or fibers that have been used either pre-colonially or post-colonially. The idea of raffia, the idea of bark cloth and the process of these um, materials that sort of come from the tree or wooden materials and I've now sort of removed that from the idea of um, focusing them on space and then moving that to this space, which is the body now. Kenya, Ghana, Ivory Coast and her native Nigeria are among the African countries that have inspired Ogisi, who worked in the oil and gas industry before studying fashion in Paris, finding her creative voice and eventually forming I Am Isigo. Everything I create um, is always either assembled there or I bring all the magical elements or ingredients for this soup. <laughs> for this soup, and I create it between Nigeria and Kenya. But I love sourcing for everything I find um, within these different places. Cote d'Ivoire also is a really magical place that I enjoy working in. Ogisi's collection not only showcased her talent as a designer, but also highlighted her ability to incorporate cultural elements into her work by combining contemporary fashion with traditional practices. She created a collection that was both visually stunning and culturally significant. I am a Sego art director, Roxanne Mbaga, said Ogisi's work sought to bring back stories from the past. Bubu basically travels across Africa, whether it is East Africa, West Africa, South Africa, Central Africa, etc., for us to remember stories of the past, stories that were erased by colonization, neo-colonization, and which today must reappear through a concern for memory. The spring-summer 2024 collection by Bubu Ogisi at Lagos Fashion Week was undoubtedly a standout moment further solidifying her position as one of Nigeria's foremost designers. Her ability to push boundaries and create unique, thought-provoking collections continues to make waves in the fashion industry, both in Nigeria and internationally. Thank you so much for watching VOA's Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voaafrica.com. We are also on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. Remember to like, to share, and to subscribe. Until next time, goodbye everyone.